It has been a rough January. Not only because January is typically a slow month for retail and typically a time when customers are looking for deals, but also I was slacking a bit and my numbers show that to be true. Hi, Singles friends. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. It is so fabulous to have you here today. If you happen to be new, my name is Heather and I'm a part-time reseller across various online platforms. And I like to use this YouTube channel to document my journey. Now, as you guys all saw by the title and the thumbnail, today we are talking about January sales and it should be a quick video because January sales stunk. <laughs> So let me show you where my numbers came in at. Let me tell you what my game plan is for the upcoming month. And then we'll go over the short list of bolos that netted me, which means put in my actual pocket more than $25. Let's get into Overall, it. Overall for the month of January, I grossed $1,018.42. So those are my total gross sales. That does not account for platform fees, any shipping discounts, any regular discounts, offers to watchers, offers to likers, or for the cost of goods. Once you remove out all of those things, my total net sales came in at only $548.81. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad, folks. <laughs> Not only are my sales low, but my ROI took a huge nosedive. Normally I'm at like a 65% and I'm down to a 54% ROI. Now again, I would expect to take a nosedive in January because we do typically let things go out the door for a lower price, trying to move through old inventory, but that's a little bit lower than I anticipated. And then also along those same lines, my average sale price came in at just $11.93. Nowhere close to my goal of netting at least an average sale price of $20, nor nowhere close to the goal of where it has been to date. As I always do, let's just talk real quick. There's not much to talk about because I only sold 46 items, but here are the items by category that I normally show. And as you can see, dresses and home were the big winners. Um, selling the most units and the bringing in the most dollars. And then it looks like I am short on men's products. So I do know when I'm out thrifting, I need to be going to the men's section. Overall by platform, I did 24% of the dollar sales on Poshmark, 34 on eBay, 28 on Etsy, which is not too bad. My Etsy sales have picked up and wouldn't you know it, they picked up because I've been listing more. Who would have thunk it? We all know, and when we get out of those routines, it's the snowball starts to happen, so you gotta get back into them. Um, and then I did 11% on Macari and 4% on Facebook. Those are where the numbers came in at, and it stinks, and I can hem and haw and get all upset about it, but that's not gonna fix anything. <laughs> so what can we do to correct it? Well, here's a list of things that I am already implementing for February. One, I need to focus on listing more. So um, what I did was I went through, I looked at what are my average net profits have been since I've gotten back into reselling in October, what my average gross sale price has been, what my active inventory currently is, um, and what my current sell-through rate is. And then I used those numbers to work backwards to get a better idea of how much how many listings do I need to have in order to attempt to bring home $2,600 a month? That there was a YouTuber uh, reseller who explained this recently. And if I find his YouTube, I'll put it up in the card. He does a really good job of explaining this and he's a great YouTuber. You can watch that video to help calculate your own numbers. Um, but what I'm looking at numerically, <laughs> to work towards my goal is to list at least 143 items per month, which is five a day. We'll test that for a couple of months. I'm keeping track of my listings in my handy dandy inventory spreadsheet to keep track of making sure that I'm re re um, sharing on Poshmark because I got rid of one shop 
because it cost me $40 a month and I clearly do not have $40 a month to spend when I'm only bringing in $550. Um, so I cancel that, so I have to do some sharing by hand, but Poshmark made that a lot easier. So I'm keeping track to make sure I'm sharing every day. I'm also making sure that I'm putting on at least five new things a day. And then I'm also keeping track of, for any reason, if I don't have five new things to put on, then I need to make sure that I delist and relist five things that I think are worth keeping in my inventory and are saleable. So we're gonna work on that for the next couple of months and I'll report back probably in early spring, April to let you know how that's doing. All right, I told you guys this one would be short and sweet, so let's get right into the bolos since there isn't much else to talk about. Um, first up, this 90s L.L. Bean Chino pencil skirt. This cost me nothing as my stepmom gave it to me along with three or four others of the same coloration and this is the last one to sell. Um, I was hoping to make $19 to $29 on this. I ended up selling it on eBay all in at $32.19. And after platform fees and cost of goods, I put into my pocket $20.13. Next up is this gorgeous, I love it, totally 80s. Believe it or not, this is a Gunny Sachs dress. And that is why I picked it up based on the brand and also based on the price as they only had it listed marked for $6.99 at Salvation Army. I know this is not the typical Gunny Sachs silhouette. It's usually boho prairie, but I just love this silhouette. I can imagine somebody wearing it to homecoming or prom or even just for a fun girls date night out. So at that price, I couldn't resist. I was hoping to make anywhere between $74 and $99 with this dress. I ended up selling it on Etsy all in at $106.67, that does include tax. And once you remove the tax, the platform fees, and the cost of shipping, and the cost of goods, I ended up putting in my pocket $61.01. This is a vintage 80s My Pieces Women's Brown Floral Midi Skirt. I can't remember, um, I think maybe I got this in that Helpsy box I recently unboxed. You guys might remember better than me. Um, it cost $3.89 and I was hoping to make $24 to $34. I ended up selling it on Macari of all places um, for $44. And I ended up after platform fees, cost of goods and the like, putting $32.44 in my pocket. Here is another vintage item. This one is a vintage Y2K Bollinger Gold ribbed knit gold metallic sweater and I do believe this one came in a Helpsy box as well. Yes, it must be the same box because this one is $3.89 cost of goods also. I was hoping to make $24 to $34 on this sweater. And this is the first time I've had anybody on Etsy actually make me an offer. They added that make me an offer feature recently and they made me an offer all in at $37.36. That includes tax and everything. And I ended up making $22.09 after it was all said and done. Um, Country Living Comforter Set was gifted to my reselling business. I sold, the, I was hoping to make $25 to $50 based on comps. It's been sitting here for quite a while and I just have it listed on Facebook Marketplace because I didn't want to deal with shipping. Um, somebody did make me a $20 offer. I said, come and get it because I'm about to donate it. So at least I made 20 bucks on that sale. This one you guys will recognize from my most recent um, Travel to Thrift With Me series over in Waynesville, the Polo Ralph Lauren Western Classic Fit. I took an offer. I was hoping to make 29 to 39. I took an offer all in at $33.99 on eBay and put $20.92 in my pocket. Oh my God, I bet you guys are so shocked about this, but look, it is another vintage item. I feel like I'm a broken record from when I was reselling before, when I used to go through all my items and talk about how many, what percentage of them were vintage, because vintage has always performed well for me and has brought in the dollars, and this is no exception. This vintage cotton brocade spread, I said spreadsheet, bed spread, <laughs> which you guys saw in a Goodwill bins haul, and that was a good haul. Um, I was hoping to make $39 to $59. Somebody offered me $38 on Poshmark, and it's, you know, this is the 20th at this point, so I knew 
it's going to be a rough month. So I took the $38 offer given I had purchased this in the bins for just an average bins price that day of $185. And I ended up putting in my pocket $28.55. And then last up is yet another vintage item. And it is also Linen's Home Goods. Um, this is a spring made floral ruffle sheet set and I have had this forever. If you watched my way back when travel to thrift series in Charlotte, I picked up these really Laura Ashley looking bed linens, pillowcases and the like. It only cost me $5.99. Well, come to figure out when I came back to reselling, I realized for whatever reason this item wasn't listed. I don't know if it fell off the platforms. I don't know if I accidentally deleted it. I don't know if somebody bought it but then changed their mind. I don't know why, but it wasn't listed. So I ended up in going back and listing it in December and here it ended up selling. I was hoping to make 39 to 59. It ended up selling all in on Etsy for six. $74.69 and that price is so high because I add shipping costs on Etsy and offer free shipping. Um, so $74.69 all in after shipping cost of goods and platform fees. I put in my pocket $47.33. If I've said it once, I'll say it again. Do not sleep on bed linens, towels, comforters, uh, bedspreads, blankets you find a lot of this stuff while you're out thrifting in the wild and sometimes it is at amazing prices and especially if you're thrifting in any of those more rural areas where there you tend to find more vintage goodness you can find a lot of this category too okay so what do you guys think let me know a few things one how was your january i'm sure it's not as crappy as mine but still do you find that it's going in the direction you want or is it not going in the direction you want two do you find that vintage is selling better for you or do you sell a little bit of everything and three what was your favorite item out of all the ones that sold and netted me over twenty dollars i love to hear what sells for you guys it's always so amazing to me that we all are in reselling but our businesses are so different so it's kind of fun to hear what worked for you versus what worked for me all right guys that's it quick down dirty sweet and we're done hopefully next month i have some better results to tell you and if the results are better let's just hope that my actions are better because i can only control what i can control you know what i mean all right guys thanks for watching i will see you next time you have a fabulous weekend week weekend weekend and i'll see you next wednesday with some more reselling content bye